What's next in this episode of Bitcoin for Millennials? For me, Bitcoin is something I can boil down very, very simply. Far simply, far more simple than I can uh, money. I look at this opportunity as, hey, imagine if you were in the 1700s and you ran across a monster diamond mine. Monster, man. Like the biggest diamond mine on the planet. This is exactly like Bitcoin. And the government didn't take over the entire mine. Or the rich family didn't immediately sequester all that land and then put a bunch of slaves to work. You're literally sitting there able to buy Bitcoin for $70,000 before 13,000 banks do it. And 400,000 super rich people like me. Sorry, I am. I've worked my whole life. So I'm going to be able to buy Bitcoin in volume. Okay. Um, my, my wedges are going to be two and a half million. And you're thinking about, hey, how do I buy 70 grand worth? You better fucking hurry up is what you need to do. And we've been yeah. telling everybody this. You're front, you have the ability to front run people. All right. Hey there, this is Bram Kanstein and you're listening to Bitcoin for Millennials. In this episode, I, I'm joined by Gary Cardone. He's a seasoned technology entrepreneur with ventures in the energy, natural gas and payment industries. He's also an outspoken Bitcoin bull who recently sold his 2.4 million Florida mansion to invest the proceeds into Bitcoin. He's actively invested in Bitcoin and the digital asset industry for the past three years. And he firmly believes in Bitcoin's potential as a re reserve asset and hedge against fiat currency debasement. Predicting more countries will openly accumulate it like gold reserves. Welcome, Gary. Excited to chat today. Good to be here with you, Bram. Beautiful day. Beautiful time to be alive on this planet. 100%. So I wanted to start with, you know, you're a seasoned investor and a businessman. Who or what has been most influential in shaping your views about money, risk, and wealth? Who or what? Uh... Well, I would say most recently, Bram, uh, the current geopolitical club has alerted every concerning, you know, predator type response I could possibly have. I feel like I'm being attacked by what used to be regulators have now become enforcement authorities, enforcement goons. Mm -hmm for whatever political, whether it's the European Union, whether it's the United States, NATO, whatever. Dude, this is a house of cards. The entire 21st century construct, all the agreements, all the little buddy buddies, wink, wink, nod, nods, all the deals NATO did to protect the oil business in the Middle East, all the Euro deals that were done to consolidate the Euro so that, and the Euro zone so that we would be look like the size of two Americas, not one. Uh, all of these agreements, all the 20th century analog way to do things are of this being eviscerated in a digital universe. It is literally being, it's like a Ferrari uh, and, and some Lamborghinis are trying to do 300 miles an hour on a dirty, dusty, rocky road. Mm. And, and it would be like, I'm sure most people have been to London, like there's no way to redo the roads in London. Okay. The only way to redo the, the circular roads in London and Rome or to flatten the entire area and start over. And that's mm. not going to happen, right? The friction to start over and to build for the digital economy is impossible to do on top of all this infrastructure, yep. whether it's solid or whether it's constructed in, in the mind. Right. And I'll just remind the audience rules and agreements are simply rules and agreements that are made up by human beings. They can be changed any time. OK, they're not they, they didn't come here from Jesus Christ and God, the almighty. OK, I mean, these are just rules and agreements made between large parties and and the winners from the past. So that's awesome for the past. But I'm not sure we're really equipped for the future with that type of mindset. So that's what's alerted me, man. Yeah. The, 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 you know, when I go shopping and look at a, uh, at a car and I'm like, whoa, what, when did Range Rovers go up $80,000? When did that happen? Last time I bought a Range Rover was in 2015. I just priced them as Jesus, dude. 
It's mm. 210 grand before you walk out the dealership. Well, and that's so, what people are seeing, right? Like not, not everywhere. also with cheaper things than, than Range Rovers, right? The, <laughs> the price inflation, but the quality is not improving, right? I think that's what uh, Jeff Booth talks about a lot, right? Like usually technology advancements should um, lead to lower deflationary prices and, and more access to the technology. But, you know, the... Um, what we see is that the prices go up. I usually use the example of just bread, right? Like, why is it funny that a bread was 25 cents in 1960 and now it's $5 and it's probably, uh, <laughs> nutrition wise, it's probably worse, right? Right. And there's still people who are hungry in the world. Like a bread should be free, you know? Um, anyway, but why do you think this is also like accelerating? Is it because people have access to the internet? They can get more information. Right. But you also see now, uh, and I will talk about some American politics, but you see it accelerating because there are people that are picking sides on, for example, Bitcoin. And there are people who are picking sides literally on central bank digital currencies, you know, in America. They are forced to make choices because the people are talking about it and they, and they see it. Right. Well, I think, uh, I ran, I ran what we do a, something called Cardone Corner uh, every morning. I'm really trying to like expand the universe of people that watch this. So it's not just about finance. It's actually, I'm, I'm actually going through my life, building a business, showing people the decisions that need to be made. Oh, Hey, I think we need to get rid of that person. I am doing this on TV, right? Mm. Uh, hey, the organization's not right. Hey, he's paid too much. The reason I'm doing that is it one, it in, includes a lot more people but also one of the things that came up i don't think people really understand what inflation is see mm -hmm. when i hear jeff ross and i really really lo love jeff and i uh, there's a number of guys uh that are just so powerful in their understanding of finance i asked a very simple question which is hey the the mcdonald's big fry right the large fry I, I, I put a post out and I said, how much are those in, in Tampa? They're $4 and 25 cents. Now I'm going to ask the question, how many French fries are in that little box? Can someone please take a picture, go to the store, <laughs> I'll pay for them, yeah. put it on my post and count. I bet there's not 40 French fries. Mm. That's $10, 10 cents a French fry, bro. Yeah. Okay. Now when you start thinking about 10 cents a French fry, that is inflation. Now, yeah. now, uh, you know, Jeff, Jeff will tell you everything is supposed to go to zero. Why mm. is it natural gas prices, which are mo far more important than French fries, has gone from seven dollars and sixty three cents in 20 years ago. And it's a dollar seventy five today. That's yeah. weird. Natural mm. gas that fuels hospitals and utilities has gone down in price by seven hundred percent. And yet McDonald's has gone up a thousand. And the quality's gone down and the volume's gone down, right? And it's poison. Yeah. Uh, it, it, they're not even good anymore, right? The hamburgers are much smaller. That is gross inflation. Not only the price, but the quantity and the quality. You're being robbed every day you wake up in the morning. The, the, and this is why Sailor, see, see, notice the people that are coming into Bitcoin. They are all left with zero options. Yeah, Michael Saylor is a genius guy. I really admire him, but his back was totally up against the wall building that business. His story is fascinating. I can't make it anymore. Google and uh, and, and Facebook and everybody, uh, all these companies that had all this money were allowed by the DOJ to become monster monopolies, monster, the biggest monopolies this planet's ever seen. Uh, no one needs the World Wide Web, okay? We ran Exxon Mobil out of town, dude. We need oil and gas. We do yeah. not need the World Wide Web. By the way, the World Wide Web does not work without fossil fuel. Check mm -hmm. that one out. Energy prices are doing this, and the web access is doing this. Prices are going up on the web. Somebody just told me Google. Somebody gave me $200 on one of these uh, super chats. Google takes 30% of the 200 bucks, dude, for doing <laughs> so what? Lost. For sitting yep. on the highway. Sitting on the highway, they control. Like when I was in the energy business, my first career was 
going to the government saying, hey, the the pipes, all the highways been paid for by all the power companies and all the gas companies and all the oil companies. That infrastructure is paid for. Google has paid for this highway system, mm. this telecom system, over and over a thousand times. Why do they get to charge me 30%, dude? For some guy liking something I said. Yeah. I mean, we're going backwards here. Okay, this is my creation, my stuff. Uh, now, I'm probably going to say this, and they're probably going to ban my ass, right? Instagram just banned me for the third time. Won't even tell me why. Mm. Like, I have to keep creating these new accounts, and it's like, this is just so much work. It seems to me like they're trying to keep the, the people off of these networks, and I maintain these networks are for society. They're not for one or two companies. Yeah, And that's the kind of political force we need today. We need truth, openness, no censorship, and we need the pipes open so that you and I can use them. Uh, there's no reason for somebody to charge me extra at 1030 a.m. in the morning. It's not like we're f f doing a football game, Olympic game, and a political, uh, you know, you, you're not having fiber being needed in massive volumes at 1030 in the morning. I could understand that. If demand changed, I could understand pricing change. Yeah. This is just 30%. I'm Google. You're not. You're going to pay. I don't think it's sustainable, by the way. That is not sustainable. Well, if, you cannot keep think, doing that to people. people. People will. Well, yeah, you know, with the internet, I don't really know because like I, I, you're talking and I think about like people saying, yeah, but uh, if Google didn't pay for it, you know, you couldn't even have this conversation or reach more people with your It's already been paid for, buddy. Exactly. Human, no, humanity no, no, has already paid for it. Exactly. But that's the, that's the point, right? Like it's, uh, they're doing it because they can and because you allow them to, right? And, and well, the, the point I'm trying to make, though, is that we already have precedent, okay? We have set precedent in Europe, the United Kingdom, Australia, the United States, and Canada, open access for all energy. Like mm -hmm. if there's a pipeline moving from Laredo, Texas, up to New York, I can bid on that capacity as long as there is one unit of capacity in that big pipe that serves hospitals, I get to bid on it. They can't hold it back. So it's imagine if Exxon, you mean totally do, but, but yeah. what is, what is Google? What is YouTube? It's infrastructure. Yeah. Okay. It's virtual infrastructure. So, I mean, imagine if T-Mobile started saying, Hey, I'm going to take a piece T-Mobile. Who do you use for, uh, for your, mainline carrier yeah, yeah, for like telecom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What if they started saying, you know, Bram's got a Bram's got a T-Mobile phone. We're going to charge him 10% of whatever Google charges him. Okay? I they mean seriously. Do that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. Hey there. I want to ask you for a quick favor. I noticed something interesting. 75% of my viewers aren't subscribed yet. Subscribing helps me grow this channel, ensuring more great content each week. So if you're enjoying our conversations on Bitcoin for Millennials, please consider hitting the subscribe button on YouTube or the follow button on your favorite podcasting app. I'm super grateful for everyone who already joined and shared their thoughts. Your feedback really keeps me going. And I want to ask you to continue doing that. I try to respond to all the comments and also the emails that I get uh, and DMs on Twitter, etc. So don't stop doing that. I'll keep going. Now let's get back to the conversation. It's fascinating how, um, and, and then I think if we go to the topic of money, right, in general, lots of people don't understand how the thing they use, you know, actually works or why they have to pay for it, right? I mean, like you can drive a car and not understand how it works, right? Like I get that, I get that premise, but some things like access to information, right? Access to value exchanges through money, across the world or across a country, right? Like those are, I would say like fundamental to any person, right? And, and so the fact that we still allow these monopolies to, to, you know, show that control over us and we are still accepting it. I think, you know, it also paints a picture around the bigger question of what is money and where Bitcoin ties in, right? Like not a, peop not, not a lot of people question what is money because when like they grow up and they, they get some money from their parent to go to a store, you know, and they get a lollipop or a bread, you know, the money just works. Like, why would you, why would you doubt that? Right. And so 
I think in general, that is what we are also kind of like, I don't want to say fighting against, but maybe fighting for us to, yeah, inform more people about, you know, this thing that you're using is not what you think it is, or at least it's not, it's not working for you, right? I see that as a really, really big challenge. But do you see that, uh, you know, you, you grew up in a different age? How, what is that comparison now? Is that that trust that people had maybe more back in the day? Is that still the same or did it change? Like, how, how do you view that? Well, I think I'm going to go back to what I was just talking about, which is, hey, if we could go to the go to the government and explain to them the pipes and the grid, which defines a first world nation, dude. Where, where do you live? Western Europe. Yeah, Western Europe. So you pay about 300% more than we pay for natural gas, for gasoline. You pay in what, $10 a gallon? About $2, uh, two, two euros a, a liter? Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay, guys, that, that's $11 a gallon. So I don't want to hear any bitching about $3 gasoline, okay? <laughs> These guys actually walk yeah. more because they don't have fancy garages all over the place consuming massive amounts of carbon, uh, a fossil fuel, okay? Building mm -hmm. a garage for a car costs money and energy. Um, so, so I think the problem is it's a monopoly, See, see, with cars, the, the, you use the example, and I think you probably heard me before say, hey, look, I drive the car 100 miles an hour down the road with my kids in it. I do not know how it works. I trust it greatly. Well, what's the yeah. difference in that in the U.S. dollar? I can go buy another car, dude, a different car. There's so much competition with cars. There's no competition with the U.S. dollar. I am forced to play in that game. That's yes. the problem. It, yes. I should not have to understand money, dude. Mm -hmm. But my children should not have to understand money. Money is a byproduct of you and I making an agreement that we're going to trade something between each other because it makes it easier. Yes. You and I might say, hey, look, I trust the guy, dude. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick up some Bitcoin from him or I'm going to take some gold from him or I trust Gary's checks. I'm sure you'd be okay. Hey, Gary, hey, Gary send me a check whenever you get around to it, okay? Yeah. The, the, the problem is by the time I send you the check, the bank's going to fuck with you because he's going to take three days to cash it. That's uncool. Okay. I send you a hundred grand and they sit on the money for at, at 1% for three days over a weekend. Right. And they're yeah. just milking everybody. Yeah. I'm really cool with these companies making a shitload of money, but don't take it from the small weak people. That's not cool. This is why I gripe about the big boys, the MasterCard, the visas. Anyone with a duopoly, an oligopoly, or a monopoly, Google. You have a monopoly, dude. Okay? Open your pipes up, just like we did for everyone. This is not complicated, dude. Like, I'm starting mm -hmm. to spend a lot of money a lot of money and time with politics. That is going to be my push. We did it in energy. Why can't we do it? You know how many agreements there are in, in the natural gas business, dude? Okay. There are thousands of oil producers, millions of buyers of energy. Yeah. There is one contract. It's called an ISDA. Okay. I can't remember the exact term, but it's basically the same agreement you sign, I sign. Mm -hmm. And it's the same agreement Exxon Mobil signs. Yeah. Now. Sounds a lot like Bitcoin, actually. Exactly, right. dude. Now, yeah. now, why is it that there's 52 million merchants on the planet and when you get a product, Let's say you bought one of these microphones. Mm -hmm. The terms and conditions on that microphone from that retailer uh, are completely different, unreadable, yes. massively yes. complex. Okay. Consent forms that we have to hit little click buttons on. I, I agree. Can't even understand the language. Mm -hmm. and most lawyers cannot understand these protract. Why can't all the governments of the world come together and go, we have a World Wide Web. We have a digital universe. There's one terms and condition. You refund this way. You f file a dispute this way. And that's it. And it's yeah. one page. Buyer I beware. Dude, yeah. Come on. This is ridiculous. It's just paying lawyers and it's clocking Joe consumer and the smallest Joe consumer on the food chain. And yeah. here's one example. November of every year, I call my bank up and I say, Hey, uh, I see all these charges. 
$12 here, $10 here, $6, wipe them. And every year, they wipe every one of you. $10,000, $12,000 worth of fees. I can show them to you on my, on, on my bank statement. They show up almost every month. You know, I'm not paying those. Your mom pays them. Okay. Hmm. Your mom has to pay them because the bank will say, no, 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 lady, lady, you're paying these. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell them I'm going to just move all the millions of dollars I have in the bank account. They, ha they have no choice with me. That's not fair. Yeah. Okay. That is well, so unreasonably fair, unfair. It's ridiculous. I don't want an advantage over the 99%. I'm going to end up in the 1%. Dude. I fight harder than most people. And that's, to me, that is the message that Max Kaiser really is trying to share with people. And it's the message I'm going to share. You must get out of the one. You have to stay in the 1% or get in it. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and the cool thing about Bitcoin, the seesaw is actually changing very, very rapidly. And you get, you get to decide how fast you want to run up this shift, because I think that you're having a polar, a polar shift. So I need to run up. And my play on Bitcoin is I'm running to Bitcoin as fast as I can so I can be on this edge of it. Okay. Yeah. Like that does not require an economics background to understand this. I think that's why people like me because I'm just Pre like, preferably really not. <laughs> Probably, right? Yeah. Well, well I, yeah. I like, what, like what you said about, you know, that money, you know, the money we, yes, I like what you said about forced to use. I say that a lot. Too. You're forced to use it because there's nothing else, right? And you, there were, you never signed something or shook someone's hand where you were like, yeah, I'm going to adopt this money, right? For, uh, to, to represent the rewards I get for the work that I put in, right? And that is exactly it. Because if we have a value exchange, you know, I say my value proposition and you say yes or no, or we negotiate and then we shake hands, right? That is totally between us. But the third party or parties, right, that influence that exchange while we are exchanging, but also after the exchange, when I get my reward, that, that reward represented in dollars in this, in the example is devalued because a third party, you know, says that it should every year. And yes, that, that is also, that is where the unfairness I'd say starts, right? Because there it creates the incentives for people to well, show different behavior, you know, like high time, time preference, et cetera, what Safe Dean talks about. And so I, I really think this is one of the key things that, that we in general should talk about, right? Like if I trade my finite time and energy and I get a reward that can be infinitely created, that's the dumbest trade that, you know, you could ever make. And people are doing it every day for their entire life. And, and they just don't see that yet right and i think you know i have worked with lots of like early stage uh, ventures and startups and stuff like we focus a lot on the problem to be solved right not mm. like like that before the solution you know and we know that eventually or well we we bet on the fact that you know bitcoin is the solution to fix the money and therefore the world but people need to understand the problem first and and most people are they are aware that something is going on when when they go to you know the supermarket and the bread is five dollars, right? But but they they don't know what it is. But I think it also comes from the fact, and that is also a hard thing I'd say to understand about Bitcoin. People are outsourcing their responsibilities to these third parties to take care of them or things in their lives, right, etc. Like the money, um, and when you realize that those people don't really care about you, maybe not in a malicious way, but just like, not like you care about your own life and your own family and your own future. Like it's just, you know, uh, yeah. When you call the bank and you talk to this lady, she also just has a job, right. And she has instructions and whatever, like she doesn't hate you or, you know, but that is how it's structured. And so, you know, like that, I think once you realize that you really have to fix your own, own stuff, um, that's kind of like when, when, when more doors open in your mind, but that's also when the struggle kind of begins, right? Once you realize I have to fix this for myself, you know, then, then that struggle begins. And what I liked, I heard you say, I think it was like on another podcast, but you say, said that you would bet your whole life on the fact that Bitcoin is the correct play. And I, I, I love that. I love to see that 
conviction. And I wanted to ask you, like, why, why is that? Well, uh, again, I have the benefit of growing up and doing nothing but startups my whole life that led to me understanding markets, global markets. So, I, I mean, I have had probably three or four MBAs, dude. I mean, a real life experience of how to build $30 billion company in six, seven, eight years with a bunch of rogue guys in a market that was too big for us to actually, uh, everybody would have shorted us, man. I mean, it was what we were trying to do was very radical, uh, to the ener energy business. This is why I can be so, 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 so confident. Okay. Like we have energy markets that literally have no long-term market. You cannot get a five-year bid on electricity that's really populated. And we know that's the right price. You can't get a five-year price on natural gas, really. Not, not, not that anybody would want to sell to you. And so if you can commoditize these products, make them hyper-transparent, where ExxonMobil doesn't get a premium over Gary Cardone, that's what the ISDA agreement's about. See, the ISDA agreement's about equalizing Gary and Exxon so that they don't have, because their balance sheet, they don't have a, a better deal than you, right? Yeah. Uh, if we can do that to commodities that determine whether you're a first, second, or third world nation, I'm quite sure Bitcoin's going to have a role, whether the government wants it or not. The cool thing is we have 108 currencies like we have 108 countries working on CBDCs. Well, 107 now because Donald Trump, assuming he wins, has basically said this to CBDCs. And he said this to not getting your wallet, not being able to control your own wallet. So I think that's awesome. OK, I'm sorry to be aggressive in my uh, language, but I think we're at that point. dude. We're yeah. at the point where people are now going to have to fight for this freedom. And, and this is what I get back to. I don't, the cool thing about Bitcoin, one, I, my conviction level is so high because I've seen this happen before. And the reaction from the legacy guy is behaving exactly like the energy guys did. The payment guys did. I built five companies under these monopolists. Okay. Like if you have a monopoly, you don't want to lose it. And if yes, you, correct. this is my, I have three rules on, on monopolies. If you have a monopoly, do everything you can to contain it, hire all the best people and starve the rest of the industry away from any intellectual capital. If you don't have a monopoly mm -hmm. and you can't buy one, go partner with one. Okay. And then if you can't buy one or partner with one, go beat one up. Well, nobody ever lets me buy one. Uh, so I get, to, I just go and, and help people like guys like you, Hey, a thousand of us, you need a million. I need 10 million guy down the street needs 3 million. These people don't get out of bed for $10 million. Did the numbers that are required to move visas needle are so large that you and I, a 30 of us can just take a million here, a million there. And then our million grows to 3 million the next year. And then it grows to 30 million. This is death by a billion cuts. And that's what we should be looking at Bitcoin as an option. Remember the car, I have a, I can do Uber, okay? I can sit in the back of the car and let somebody else drive it. I can buy a different, I can buy a Ford instead of a Range Rover. Now, what's the difference in me? I don't think this is just about Bitcoin. I mm -hmm. think men need to stand up, grow a spine, dude, and start telling their kids they can't eat $7 French fries from McDonald's anymore. It's bad for them, and it's really bad for the family. It may be yeah. convenient right after school, but long term, it is horrific. You're wasting your fuel. It's it's like you you drive to the the school to pick your kids up, and you have to wait in line thirty minutes. So you're just going to keep running your car. Really, you're not going to turn your car off. You're just going to run the gasoline. Well, you're rich. You're richer than me. Okay, I'm turning my mm. car off. Uh. People running around like, hey, hey, and then they go spend $4.25 on 40. Like, when you start thinking about, it, wow, 10 cents of French fry, dude? Yeah. Okay. When you break it down like that, 10, you think Bitcoin's expensive? <laughs> dude, 
French fries last at least maybe no more than 30 minutes. The, <laughs> yes. the, the, the duration curve, the lifespan on a fucking French fry is zero, yeah. right? $4 and 25 cents. It's outrageous. And it's all over the place. I went to dinner with my kids last night. Dude, it's a hundred dollars. Okay. It's a hundred dollars to go to dinner. And it was a shit. It was, it was not good. Yeah. Glass of tea, one beer and a meal for, for two kids and myself. And wow, I had to give the guy 17 yeah. bucks just for the tip. I mean, I can't like just stiff him. It was $83 and I give him. So it's a hundred bucks to walk into a restaurant nowadays. Yeah. I think men need to go back to work. And if you don't have enough work, you need to get some more work so that you can make fiat and buy some Bitcoin and protect your family. You can't just go buy Bitcoin and do nothing. Like you, yeah. we need to get in production. The guy that's going to end up on this 1%, dude, he's the guy running. He's running toward it. He doesn't stop. You're running toward, hey, I want to get out of this shit. I don't know what your family did, but you have a window now that allows you to change the trajectory of your entire DNA, man. Yeah. I mean, your whole lineage, uh, you get to decide, are you going to be in the top 20, top one, bottom? I don't want to be in the bottom, dude. It's not fun there. I think it's interesting how you went from, you know, the fries are 10 cents a piece, you know, and that's the inflation to protecting your progeny pretty quick. I think that is also what Bitcoin eventually shows you that you, you can do that. Like you are way more in control, right? For whatever you want to do. I think that's very important to emphasize, right? Like I think that is what it brings you. So what made it like really click for you? What made Bitcoin really click? For you? What's like the pinnacle point? The pinnacle, I don't think there's a pinnacle. I don't think it's a magic bullet that I went, oh, okay. Uh, first off, the thing I observed was who's playing in this game? See, for me, the pioneers in the early days, they were a little too much for me. I, I couldn't. I didn't know the difference between Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Zip, Bitcoin, I, it, it, and all the tribal stuff. Not a good look, man. That cost me a billion. Not looking past the carnival cost me a billion dollars. Mm. At least a billion. Uh, I think I look around at the, the, the amount of people, uh, the Dan Tapiros, the, uh, some of the big players on Wall Street, that uh paul tudor jones okay i mean these are these are heroes of mine man these are guys that are big swinging dicks okay and they've all lost shit loads of money over their lifetime they're not perfect if you play in this game you're gonna i mean i lost 140 million dollars one year trading commodities you go through uh an experience like that you will man up or commit suicide one or the other mm. um actually it was great for me because i pivoted so I was actually in a back to my point about uh, Michael Saylor, his back being up against the wall. I was in a payments industry business that me and my partner own 100 percent of the company It's the only fintech. I know that didn't borrow money from somebody or take money from outsiders. It was worth about four hundred and fifty to five hundred and fifty million dollars. She and I own the whole thing. We were married. Marriage starts to collapse due to the. We, we lost our focus. We were no longer married. We were just business people. Um, and uh, I'm watching her have to work harder and harder and harder to make the money. And I'm watching Bitcoin going, hey, I think I can do this easier. And so I, try, I, I tried to put Bitcoin on our balance sheet in 2018. She thought I was a lunatic. Then she hired a bunch of lawyers. Uh, boy, would that have been a great trade for her, dude. Wow. Yeah. I mean, unbelievable trade for her. I think we were buying, I was buying at 8,000 bucks. And we had $30 million on the balance sheet or something. Um, so watching all these very smart guys and they all had particular characteristics. They're not late players. They tend to be early. They're roguey like me, right? Yeah. I, I consider myself a bit of a, like I, I don't fit in a mold, right? I am a, I am a CEO. Therefore I am, you know, all that stuff. That's just, BS, right? Um, I saw a really interesting character, 
particular character, which I identify as. And then I saw a bunch of people like my twin brother who were so in their own business that they couldn't look outside what's going on. And, and one of the reasons that real estate always goes up in value that my brother really struggles with uh, is dude, the only reason real estate goes up is because you, you, because you have inflation. Mm. That is the only reason a house goes up from 200 to 700. Um, if you removed, and, and this really got me, this one little fact, uh, 72% of the people in America own their home or they think they own their home. What would happen tomorrow morning if mortgages weren't available at 70 cents on the dollar? Uh, the house I live in right here, by the way, the story you tell. Everyone would buy a home, right? Well, everyone does buy a home. But if, if, if mm. the mortgage rates, if you couldn't borrow three times the amount of money that the house is really worth, right? In other words, yeah. I have a house worth a million dollars. I only need 300 grand to put the down payment. Uh, and then a bank's going to give me 700 grand. What, what would happen if those were all made illegal tomorrow? No, there's no mortgages. You can't fractionate and, you know, pay 8%. The yeah, housing market would collapse. Would yeah. Collapse. Guess what you don't have? Yeah, Bitcoin is a transient asset, a finite location, location, location. That's real estate pitch. Location, location, mm -hmm. location means finite, finite, finite. Right? Yes. Like location doesn't mean, hey, I'm going to go in the middle of the ocean and build some real estate. No, it means I'm going to build in the center of Dubai. I'm going to build yeah. in the center of Manhattan. That's prime exactly. real estate. Well, bro, Bitcoin, I look at Bitcoin and go, Ooh, what would happen if I could borrow 70 cents on the dollar to Bitcoin? Poof. Price would go up 4X. So we're comparing two things that like completely different. Okay. And if you really compare them, you start to realize, oh my goodness, man, Bitcoin is a beast. It doesn't require the leverage to do well. It's going to emulate inflation, de facto inflation, because it'll be the only finite location, 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 true location that you have. And I've been really interested in the people that can't see this. So to me, those people see, I watch people that say no. Most people just disregard them, but I'm like, no, 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 listen to them, man. This is the masses. Okay. Yeah. So when you hear the masses start to say the same thing, you're like, oh, wow. Every, remember the masses, another rule here, the masses always make the wrong mistake. Okay. If everyone's going to get vaccinated, I can, I'm going to bet my life that it's a wrong move, dude. If everybody mm -hmm. gets in that queue on the M25, notice how everybody gets in the left lane. They love standing in line, in line, dude. People love getting in line. Okay. Me, I'm like going around the red. Eh, okay. Maybe a little rude. I'll wave to them. But uh, I think you just got to get out of the, 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 the machines not working, dude. We're at war everywhere. Mm -hmm. What is working on this planet? Like, just look around. Wow. Well, nothing's working. Okay. Mm -hmm. The media is not working. Uh, the banks aren't working. The police won't even engage criminals stealing $900 from a Neiman Marcus in Paris. Yeah. Right. You got people walking into countries. You got people walking into countries like uh, no responsibility. So I think all of these things showed me. Uh, look, I don't want to work overwork. See, I want to yeah. work smart. I think people yeah. overwork a lot. Well, that's what safe Dino Moose says, right? You have to earn your money twice. You know, you earn the money and then you have to do something else to protect it also, right? So do you see buying Bitcoin as saving or investing or protecting? Like, how would you define it for yourself? Yes. Everything. Investing, saving, <laughs> yeah. and protecting. Mm. I, I, so, so I'm going to put it just a little differently. I get back to the men getting growing a penis and some balls and going back to work. Um, I think over the last 40 years, our moms have been a little too, oh, baby, booby, booby. You know, they've been really soft with us, okay? 
Um, what is freedom to you? Can, can I, I, I always ask this question. How would you define freedom? That's a really good question. I think uh, for me, freedom is uh, deciding, purposefully deciding what I spend my time on. Yeah. Purposefully deciding what you spend your time on and being given the ability to do that, right? You, you can actually execute it, not just study it, but you can do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I define freedom as the ability to say no to anyone, dude, yeah. comma, and the ability to say yes to anything I want. Now that is free. Dumb. The problem is it's not free. I have to be willing to one talk about it. I have to be able to like get other people to support this view that, Hey, it is not free. I know people that died under the idea that the United States was a great country in Western Europe. I know people died in Western Europe. Uh, pick an age, dude. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's not like this is new. Okay. We go to war. Human beings like hurting other things. Um, which is also another great indicator to me. This is when I really went like mental over Bitcoin. When I identified this one thing, what is freedom? And then what is finite? If show me one product that's finite on this planet. One. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You're looking at them. I'm looking at them. That's it, dude. The yeah. only thing that I can show you other than Bitcoin is you as a human being, Unique. I'm a identical twin. We couldn't be more different. Okay. Like, like his wife would never marry me, dude. She doesn't <laughs> probably funny. even like me. Okay. We're just yeah. so different. <laughs> yeah. Energy, frequency, harmonics, our agendas in life, the way we approach everything. Well, what if I, do you think that we value each other as human beings over the 7,000, 10,000 years? Have we done a good job of valuing this finite thing? these human beings? No, I, no, no. it's actually one of the things I wanted to also ask, like this, this is what also really changed for me. I love, you mentioned Max Kaiser. I had a previous episode with him where we really talked about this spiritual path also that Bitcoin brings you on. Right. And I love what, what you say about, um, you know, the finiteness of, of you and the finiteness of me, right? The fact that we were given a life by randomness, right? We are here. I, I once read, I think it's like one in 300 billion chance or trillion chance, I think it's trillion, that you are you. And then you're also a twin, by the way, which is even more red, <laughs> random, right? But that you are you, that already is the biggest gift, right? And And people... I think in a more distant past, appreciated that way more, way, way more than everything around them also, right? I, uh, I think it's in New Zealand where they have like this rule for uh, construction of like new um, towns or bridges or roads or whatever. They have one first rule and the first rule is like nature was here before us. And so we have to respect the nature before we we even do anything, right? The nature is the is the number one, and so just that connectedness to it, just n not even the nature, but just to each other, right? Like that is gone, but it's because you know, and I don't want to tie it back to the money all the time, but but if money is the communication technology you and I use to exchange value with each other. If if another entity corrupts that, then everything coming from these agreements between people is influenced and in, you know, the, the incentives are changed because that reward is influenced by another person. Right. So even if we have a very positive value exchange and our incentives are aligned and, and we would want to work together to build something, whatever it is, then it's still being influenced by other people, you know? And I think that, uh, you know, like I really think that anything you would want to fix in the in the world is broken because the money is broken. It's downstream from all these perverse and negative incentives, right? And 
th that's why I'm also so fascinated about uh, you know people that call themselves progressives <laughs> that want to fix everything mm. in the world. Like, why don't you see this? Right? Like, why is it messed up? You know, because people are corruptible. You and I too, if we are in this position, and we would take advantage of that position when we are in this position, right? Like, it's not that hard to acknowledge that but i think once you acknowledge that then it's very easy to agree that we should go to a money system that is based on unchangeable rules versus random rulers that make up random rules yeah yeah i agree man i i mean i think i would become a uh tyrant and i would justify it i wouldn't see it as a tyrant i would have advisors around me and they'd be telling me that this is good for the Cardone legacy and let's exclude that group of people because you know they don't really do your brand any value and yeah I, I, listen I agree I, I will say though I don't think money solves all of this okay I, this is where I do disagree with the Bitcoin Bitcoin is not going to solve every problem on this planet and and that's why I say hey look I think the men need to stand up okay if you have a pair of balls and a penis, uh, like one, we need to go create some babies. Two, if you're going to create babies, you might want to take some responsibility for it. Okay. They don't grow up by themselves. And I think one of the reasons we're in the problem we're in is that because of the money uh, and because of some other I think social pressures from psychologists and shrinks and weirdos who've never done anything. Uh, and sorry, but like if you haven't dug a ditch, built a company, gone to war, I'm not sure you really done a lot other than just pontificate. I am not a pontificator, right? I have experience, real life experience. You lose $140 million, dude, it's a fucking experience. Okay. Mm. And then survive it. Um, go through a couple of divorces and survive it. Nobody gets hurt. I just think that the, the, we have gotten very soft and that, uh, we are probably going to have a world war three and a depression so that the organism called human beings can toughen up. And like, if I end up in Western Europe with you and everything's hitting, you know, it's a shit storm. I'm probably more likely to be valuable to you with food and a gun than I am holding a bunch of Bitcoin. That is true. I would agree. Right? If with we're, that. Yeah. if we're restoring uh, Washington cause it was destroyed. Uh, like if I was a politician, I would require every citizen to go into either the military Navy army or go work for the highways, dude, but you're doing two years. You're going to bust your ass for two years and you're going to give back to society. And then I'm going to give you an education and I'm going to give you that education in two years. I'm not going to ask you to do four. We're stealing yeah. time from people's lives by making them go through the school system. Everything's broken, dude. Mm. Everything like not just money, our, our, our belief in each other. Once we figure that out, I, like once we can really value each other, well, you know, I do a lot of these social media things and it's not, I did not intend on doing any of this, but one of the things I'm noticing is that if you are calm and rational and listen, well, you can actually start to move people from not everyone, but you can start to move people from, Hey, look, rather than me looking at Bram and saying, well, I don't really understand his name. He looks like he might be a little Eastern European German. I never really liked German food. So, you know, what's Bram going to come up with? And he's a maxi. So look at what I'm doing instead of going, Hey man, I remember when I was your age, dude, good job, bro. You're doing a good job. Uh, I see you interviewing people. That's awesome. I know that's scary, right? all these mm -hmm. people that you're just meeting. Why is it so easy for a human organism to immediately look at the difference in each other and immediately push it away? And, and that's what people do to Bitcoin, dude. They don't understand it. I don't understand that shit, man. What you don't understand is what's actually happening to you right now. Yeah. I, I would agree that it, 
it, it does not all come from the money, but the environment that's created because the money is broken does incentivize this behavior, right? Like Agreed. if you don't have to think for yourself or in some moments stand up for yourself or protect yourself or shut the fuck up, right? Just being aware of what you need to decide, what you need to do. That is uh, the, the fact that people are not doing that is also the product of the environments that are created by all these preferred for first incentives because of the broken money, I'd say, right? Just the fact, like, I love this example and, and thank you for saying that too. I get comments on YouTube, right? You get comments on YouTube as well. You know, like, yeah, what the fuck is he talking about or this and that? And then I think like, but I'm doing something. I'm, I'm trying to do something. Right? And I'm figuring it out as I go. And you are apparently so triggered, or I don't know, that you feel the urge to say something mean as an anonymous person on the internet, right? And it's just a really tiny example, but I think it does illustrate kind of what you just mentioned. Like, if you would be doing your own thing, you would not be commenting mean things on the internet, right? And and just the, the and again, it's just a simple example, but but just that people feel inclined to share that opinion in some way, and then think it has value or like it's valuable for the time they spend on it or something, like that is just very messed up, right? And that's why I get to like the spiritual part a lot because it is eventually about being conscious about who am I, what am I, what am I here to do, right? What what do I like? What don't I like? And all like just the, the entire exploration of the self, you know. And the current environment is really created and maintained also to distract people from going on that exact journey. Because if you know who you are, and someone else does something on the internet that you don't like, you'll be like whatever, <laughs> you know. So then it's just not that important. It doesn't in, invoke you to spend time on on this person because you keep you, you stick you stick to yourself in a sense I, I hope that makes sense but i think yeah that i that that environment is created and maintained on on purpose and i would agree that is what we are fighting against it is some sort of war in a sense because a lot of people stay in the same place other people like us, we are talking, we are trying to figure this out, you know, we're trying to connect with people, build communities, stuff like that. And so in that sense, I do see it kind of like that. I think, um, I think this is why I, I come back to the whole free thing, right? What is freedom? And nobody, everybody I've ever asked that question to, they all do the same thing. Oh, that's an interesting question. Well, why don't we talk that in grade school, man? I agree. Yeah, it, Right? And if you start thinking about it that way, then you start going, oh, wow, none of this is free. This is why you say I got triggered. I actually got responsible. I've been hiding, dude. I'm a rich mm -hmm. guy. I don't need to do any of this stuff, right? Uh, but the more I look at it, I'm like, hey, nobody's telling any of these people the truth. They've been lied to for at least eight years in school. I mean, yeah. the last 40 years of education has been total lies. Total lies. I mean, we're walking around with knowledge today that we for certain know that the Big Bang did not occur the way that you were taught in school. It is not the reality we thought we once had, yet we're still teaching it. But we know. We know with the, the, the latest satellite telescope thing, Oh, wow, shit's really different than we thought it was. Mm. Um, and yet we continue to teach this bullshit, okay? It's all a lie. So, I mean, I think, I think with Bitcoin, it really starts to give me a parachute, right? An exit, a, a, a uh, escape valve, an option. Somebody heard me say the other night, they said, well, basically for you, Bitcoin is a put option on America. And I said, Oh, no, bro, wrong, wrong. Mm. Bitcoin is a 
non-decaying, forever uh, put option on all legacy constructs. Not just America, dude. The whole fucking thing. Yeah. And it's a call option without degradation or duration exposure. It is a call option on the future of the digital uh, of the digitization of planet Earth. If I start to think about that we are digitizing planet Earth instead of thinking about uh, we're doing money and making it all about money, I think we're digitizing planet Earth and we are going to measure, account, track, trace everything in a way that we never could before. Why? We're not going to be using these guys anymore. I love pencils because I like to draw and make little pictures, but you cannot track, trace, account for, manage, understand ROIs in a market that's obfuscated, that's very dark. You can't see it. It's not transparent. Giving Google the option to charge 30% for somebody sending me 200 bucks just because it might, it was my content. <sighs> That's no, that's no better than what Hollywood's been doing in the music guys, right? That's right. actually probably worse. I'm not sure they take 30%. Um, so, so that's why I've gotten involved is to help educate because I realized the education system so bad, which has then led me into politics, which I would have never thought I'd be in politics. I mean, I'm going so down this rabbit hole. It's, it, look, look at Kaiser, dude. Kaiser's involved in politics now. You can't yeah. not get involved in politics if you start doing this because you realize, okay, I might be rich, but I haven't changed any of the rules. Like, I'm going to get fabulously rich on Bitcoin, dude. Fabulously, but stupidly it, so, rich. So what does Bitcoin give you? Like, does it give you that... Does it give you more autonomy in a sense and therefore kind of like backs up that... Thing, well, how do you say? Like, yeah, it kind of like backs the actions that you would want to take to change stuff, and it's like it's the free. hardest it, thing that can back you, right? That, that's why I keep asking the word, "Hey, what's free? What is freedom?" Yeah. Because yeah. I think Bitcoin is my freedom button. It's my freedom weapon, right? It's my hey, fuck yeah. off, dude. Yeah. Like, like I can leave the country now. Like, like yeah. I don't want to leave America. I think America is a great country. I think it's got a lot of work to do. Uh, yeah. But like, if you got kids, this is why I keep telling the guys, Hey, man up, dude, man up. Y'all are treating jobs. Like you have an option. If you went into the military and you had to be deployed to Iraq, you wouldn't I offered a guy a job the other day. He's in Arizona. He's got a six month old kid. They declined to take the job because the requirement to make $120,000 a year with Gary is to live in Florida near Gary and attend his mm -hmm. office. Okay. I guess what? I'm not moving to employ him. His wife killed the deal because they have a six month year old kid and they, he needs to grow up with kid, his kids and be stable. What the fuck is that about it? Mm -hmm. Okay. That is just dumb. Okay. I mean, if you were in the military, you'd be like, got 12 hours to deployment, bring your wife or don't bring your wife. We're going to lock and exactly. load, lock and roll. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So why does a guy and you think cannot, you cannot uh, negotiate anything, of course, right? prison, like there's dude. no option. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, but why, why, why do people treat it differently? And then, then what they do? Oh man, those Cardones, man, they're really workaholics. <laughs> what do you mean? Workaholic. You don't call the guy a workaholic. That's an assassin. Mm -hmm. Uh, crawling in the ground with insects all over him, trying to shoot a bad, bad, bad guy. Well, well why do we do this? Right. And so like, yeah. if I've lived my life as an entrepreneur, a warrior entrepreneur and had all these great adventures, do I, do I look like I've had fun? I don't look like a maniac, right? I don't look like a retard that can't do anything but work. Uh, I think I've, produced a few products i've employed thousands of people that must be good man right um i mean churchill look how flawed churchill was what was he good for europe or bad for europe mm. i agree but the, again this is kind of like the current culture this 
I don't, is that envy? It's not really envy. Yeah, it's like empty envy or something. Like uh, you can only. I don't know how to how to say that in English, but it's kind of like people take for granted that say they kind of take for granted that they can say that shit, and they also actually think it has value or something. It's very weird. I don't know. It's kind of well. Just before we started recording, right? I told you, like, um, you know, you're a bit older than me. Like for me, the the more older people that have lived more that went into Bitcoin, they are like the biggest signal for me because I do not have that experience, right? Like if I read uh, uh, Greg Foss's Twitter bio. It says like 35 years in a risk chair, or, you know, and I think like, I, well, I just turned 36, but like 35, like that's my whole life in that, you know, role and, and expertise and industry. And he's telling me, you know, this is the biggest asymmetric bet <laughs> that I've ever seen in my entire professional life. The only thing I can think of is who the fuck am I? <laughs> you know, like I'm listening to what he is saying because I have nothing to compare that with like i have nothing to say against that literally nothing besides maybe my feelings if i would have negative feelings about bitcoin right and i think that is in general what we are seeing people have certain feelings or i don't know um expectations and they are allowed to voice them without any repercussions you know and i think that is probably what you were also uh kind of like referring to like it's there will be a repercussion, right? The guy got a job, but he didn't want to move. Well, you know, good luck with the next job. It's basically what you're saying, right? Well, I think I think good luck with his whole life because one is his wife's managing his entire schedule, and then she'll beat him up for not being successful. Uh, they've completely already decided they're going to turn their little boy into a pussy. Uh, a little baby, man, a little snowflake, uh, no anti-fragile. Like I, I, I had a sur major surgery when I was seven years old. I lost my father when I was nine, lost my brother when I was 20. I started smoking dope when I was 13. I had a girl leave me when I was 25. I thought I was going to get married to find out she got pregnant, killed the baby. I love this woman. Never had a good relationship after that. Uh, I've lost shit loads of money. I had to give up. 10 years of my life to go to England to build two companies. Dude, freedom is not free. Okay. This, mm. like, I just think that people are, at, they have lost their mind. I mean, they, people think we are in a take society. We're no longer in a give society. I met a guy your age once. Or we build fishing. society. Build, uh, I, I say, I say building versus consuming. We are in a taking, right? Like a consume versus building. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, Look, that, that, I think that's it, right? We are consumers and we're yeah. a feel good society. And I was fishing with a guy once for, uh, in, in saltwater and he was your age. And he said, you know, there's only two types of people in the world. I said, really? I never heard that before. He said, yeah, they're givers and they're takers. And I'd never heard that. Here I am like an old guy, right? I'm like, wow, that's cool. Dude. It's just boil it down. And for me, Bitcoin is something I can boil down very, very simply, far simply, far more simple than I can uh, money. I look at this opportunity as, hey, imagine if you were in the 1700s and you ran across a monster diamond mine, monster man, like the biggest diamond mine on the planet. This is exactly like Bitcoin. And the government didn't take over the entire mine or the rich family didn't immediately sequester all that land and then put a bunch of slaves to work. You're literally sitting there able to buy Bitcoin for $70,000 before 13,000 banks do it. And 400,000 super rich people like me. Sorry, I am. I've worked my whole life. So I'm going to be able to buy Bitcoin in volume. Okay. Um, my, my wedges are going to be two and a half million. And you're thinking about, Hey, how do I buy 70 grand worth? You better fucking hurry up is what you need to do. And we've been yeah. telling everybody this, your front, but you have the ability to front run people. Yeah. I think the byproduct of, 
all the stuff we've just been talking about and then encountering Bitcoin, the byproduct of people fading this, <sighs> it, or, well, the byproduct of what we are talking about is people fading this. They, they, they are not able to trust themselves, right? And they see something and they think this is too good to be true. All the gains are made in the past or, you know, like they, they cannot understand that they are also living in a part of history where really big things are happening, right? I actually talked about this with a friend today. There were also just guys living in the Second World War, right? <laughs> or the Great Depression or the Middle Ages. Like there were people just like us that were living when that was actually happening. And they also didn't realize it, right? You only see it when, when you look back. And that's why it's so hard, right? Because everything in the past seems so far away and like not real. But we are actually living here. And the fact that people have so much trouble with trusting themselves and therefore, you know, resolve to saying, you know, oh, you're an idiot because <laughs> you're into Bitcoin, right? Or you're talking about Bitcoin, so it can only go up and blah, blah. Like that, that is, yeah, I find it a bit sad sometimes that I think like, damn, like your mind is so captured, right? And and I've said this on the podcast lots of times. My mind was also captured. You know, I was 30 and I worked at a bank and I had a mortgage. And then someone told me, did you know the money in the bank is not yours? I said, what are you talking about? And then he explained it to me, right? So, you know, it takes it takes time, but the time is running out, right? And I wanted to ask you about this. Like, how early are we? Like, how many people in the world do you actually think, actually think understand what this is? If you would have to put a number on it. I think we, we're 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 not as early as we were a year ago. Um, I do think we're still early. I think if you came, in, well, maybe maybe we do it this way. Um, all the big minds that built the internet, DARPA, NSA, CIA, Google, Facebook, Meta, who else did it? All right, all these brilliant guys. <clears throat> Gosh, they didn't put money into the deal, dude. They they didn't think about, oh wow, this internet thing, a communication cycle, is actually a currency. See what you and I are doing right now. We're flowing currency to we yes. are like literally electrons flowing back and forth, ideas, um, energy pulses, and here the whole internet gets built from 1990 to 2014 when it really just in 2005 and then it goes through the 2008 and then goes through COVID it restructured COVID restructured an entire landscape of change that will, will never go back. Uh, but isn't it interesting that all these great minds completely missed, Hey man, there's going to be money moving back and forth to buy adult products and hair products and Amazon products and counseling and teaching and education. And guess what? The World Wide Web allowed Visa and MasterCard to make six, seven, eight percent for doing nothing, dude. The, the, the mm -hmm. payment rails weren't even built for e-commerce. They, they didn't even think about it. So if you think we're early, you're fucking crazy, dude. 20 years into the internet and it doesn't even have a way to use money. So it all gets built on top of that. That just shows you how radical the internet was and then connecting 8 billion people. Look, this is the truth. And this is why my conviction is so high. When you introduce transparency to a marketplace, what is the World Wide web? It's basically a virtual globe, an aquarium where buyers and sellers can see each other. Is that a fair representation? Mm -hmm. I would that say is so, called yes. transparency. When you yeah. introduce transparency into a marketplace, one thing always happens, like not 18 things, one thing. Transparency leads to commoditization. Commoditization, all products look and feel and taste the same. Commoditization leads to a reduction in margins, massive reduction in margins, and the volumes explode. This happens over mm. and over and over again. Who doesn't want their margins to go down? People that report quarterly earnings. 
They cannot explain to 23 year old kid, hey, look, I know our margins are collapsing, but the volume's going to go crazy. Then they shark the shit out of Google and then go, I don't want to sell this store. That's the paradigm we're in right now. We're early, mm-hmm. not as early as we were at 30. Okay. But most certainly, and, and I would love Max Kaiser, if you can coordinate a me and Max Kaiser call, I will ask Max this one question. I've done it to other guys that were really early. I know people that have $3 Bitcoin. And I know mm-hmm. people that have 35 cent Ethereum. Is it a better, safer, risk adjusted trade today versus $3? I would never have put forty million dollars to work at three bucks, dude. No chance. No. I, I, but I'll do it at seventy grand. I'll do every penny I have. I think that's the general answer uh, today, right? Like way less information, way less voices, way more uncertainty um, in the in the early days, right? And so I think it's it's a very specific set of people that actually saw it. You know, Max Kaiser had. Uh, a patent for uh, digital currency, something like way before like 1997 or 1998. So he was like already like into this. He had this Wall Street experience where, um, you know, uh, the, in 1987, there was a big crash, etc. So I think he as a person was kind of like primed to to get it early. Like he was already pretty averse to, you know, the whole Wall Street uh, finance finance thing. Um, but yeah, I love that question. I think 100% way easier today to make big decisions to to go into Bitcoin. Um, luckily, there was one thing actually that Max said, which struck me. He said, I don't know if it's better to be early now or like when he was early because he's also older. So he says, I see all these things, but I don't know if I'm going to be there to actually see them happen, you know. And I think that's an interesting realization when you think about Bitcoin and time and the finiteness, right? Like you can be right, but you can also be right at the wrong time, like be be too early, right? Um, yeah, I just thought it was an interesting reflection because... Look, yeah, look, um, and, and this yeah. is to your question um, about, you know, timing and we, we, we have proof now, dude. We have a presidential mm-hmm. candidate running for office saying you will never not be allowed to self, not self custody. You will not, yeah. we will not have a CBDC. Okay. We have people now making statements that are going to be very difficult to take back. And I would challenge any politician to fuck with us. Like you need to be careful with this army because the passion that's, that's here is not true. just about money. It's about freedom. That's why I keep getting back to the freedom piece. Um, if we think about what freedom is, let's not get lost in money. Let's Mm -hmm. keep focused on our freedom. If you don't think you have enough freedom today, you should connect with more people like me and Bram because we agree with you. We don't have enough freedom and freedom is actually the right answer for society. It isn't then like the real answer as an extension to what you said, right? Like uh, decide when you want to say no or yes. It's it's kind of like decide when you want to say fuck you, right? <laughs> like to any politician or anyone who wants to exert their power over you. It's right. It's like yeah, I'm just not. I'm just not gonna listen to you. And like, what are you gonna do about that, right? And not even in a bad way. You're not gonna listen. Like if your idea sucks or you propose to spend taxes on something fucking stupid. I'm just not going to pay you taxes or I'm not going to give you my permission or I'm going to vote against you. Right. And I agree this, what I think is fascinating. And I want to be mindful of the time too, but I, I, I want to ask you about like Trump. It two things. I think most politicians do not realize how big this is. I say to other Bitcoiners, I think next to religion, there's nothing else in the world where people from all diff- all sorts of different places, all sorts of different ages, backgrounds, etc., are so connected than with Bitcoin. Maybe it's even more than religion. Like we are so interconnected. Everyone is digital. Everyone is online, right? Like I can fly anywhere in the world and say like, are there any Bitcoiners that I can meet? And, and the answer is yes, right? Like, like that is real, already real. And so I think most politicians do not realize how big and interconnected this is, right? 
the, the entire free Ross Ulbricht movement is worldwide, right? He's incarcerated in the States. Like something like that is, I think is a good example. So I don't think they understand it. I know I would love to get your opinion, but also did you already expect like Trump saying stuff or any politician saying stuff like he just said in this election cycle? <laughs> like we, we are earlier, I'd say, than generally expected with regards to that. Yeah, I, listen, I think that uh, Trump is not stupid. Uh, I've always believed, I don't think Trump knows very much about Bitcoin or anything else around crypto. Yeah. And the truth is, we don't need him to understand anything about it. I, I'm sure he does not understand anything about space travel. Okay. I'm quite certain he yeah. doesn't understand anything about the vaccines that he pushed because yeah. everybody and his brother was saying, hey, do this. So I, I can't really like, look, he's commander in chief. Okay. He's the head general. It doesn't mean that he knows how to shoot a weapon. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to. The guy that yeah. made the Barrett 107, which is one of the great sniper weapons on this planet. It, it's fascinating to me. You know, they're scientists, they're pressure experts, they're mineral experts, metal guys. And like, what's the first thing they do when they finish the weapon, man? They hand it to a shooter. The guy that built it doesn't shoot it. He hands it to a guy that knows how to shoot weapons. I mm. find that really interesting. And it basically nullifies all these stupid comments, the Robert De Niro comments. Of like, dude, what, what are you talking about? Like, I just need somebody that can hold a position in space that says, no, yeah. we're not going to war anymore, dude. I have 15 minutes to solve this. If we go to war, I'm going to fuck you up bad and get it done with. Like, if we go to war, let's finish it in three days. Okay, that, that to me is uh, like I'm tired of outsourcing to other people that they lose their limbs and their arms and. Uh, look, this is just people are fed up, man. It's not working. The old way is failing. Like yeah. uh, you don't even need to make anyone wrong. You just look at the results. Four dollars and twenty five cents for forty French fries. <laughs> Ten cents yeah. a French fry, bro. Seven pence. Right. Eight euros. A uh, point eight euros. Come on, man. It's ridiculous. So. Yeah. I, I think this is actually much more significant than religion, because if you asked, uh, I grew up Catholic, I won't ask you. I grew up Catholic. If I said, hey, I'm coming to Germany, man, any Catholics? Not everybody's just going to let me in their house, dude, just because I'm mm -hmm. a Catholic. But a Bitcoin thing, bro, bro, yes. you're, you're coming, dude, you can stay with me, dude. I, I have parties here twice a year. I had 500 people here the other night, uh, two months ago. I'm happy to invite you to the next one I have because you seem like a nice guy. 50 of those people came from Twitter, uh, yeah. YouTube. I never met them in my life, dude. I had four security guys here with weapons. We had a party. We had a blast. Ten hours went on. No fights, no arguments. Oil and gas, lawyers, M&A people. Legacy business, credit card business, Bitcoin, dancers, artists. Dude, we had a blast. You know what the common theme was? It wasn't religion. It wasn't Judaism. It wasn't war. It was Bitcoin. Once yeah. the gravity of this topic is really fascinating, mm -hmm. man. Yes. And, and many people won't really understand that until they get in. Like my brother hears me say that. And he's like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> You believe uh, in shit that I, I don't even experience. think it has any basis, right? Oh, it's so funny. I hear myself say things where I'm like, damn, <laughs> like that's where I am in my mind, right? Like that, yeah, it's fascinating what it does to you. I think it's hard to pinpoint also what it does to you. But this, this, what you just said, I think is what it is. You can meet anyone who's in Bitcoin, regardless of age, race, gender, all that. It's all nonsense. It's all nonsense in, in, in Bitcoin. And I think that is actually what would transcend like all religion, anything. You know, it's just that one thing that we agree upon and that's already enough to explore each other even further, right? And that, that I've, I'd say that is just uh, that is just it. Yeah, really interesting. I want to yeah. ask you two more questions. Yeah, I agree, man. It's, it's fascinating, we... actually. Yeah. Well... I have I have more questions, but I wanted to ask you, do you think wealth equates happiness? No, absolutely not. 
and why? Well, one, I think you have to define what is wealth. I, I'm just going to keep putting this up over and over and over. This is all that matters, guys. Okay, yeah. this is the Gary Cardone truism. This is all that matters. I'm interested in freedom at the most extreme level. Can you have too much freedom? Nah, dude, I want... The problem is it comes with responsibility. Yeah. In order for me... Like, I have not been a social figure, okay? I, I don't really like the camera. I look at myself and go, ah, damn, dude, you look old, you look rough, you should have shaved. But if I'm not going to say this at my age, with my experience, who's going to do it? Because all I'm doing is complaining. I complained mm -hmm. since I was 15 about the school system. Hated it, man. I destroyed eight years of my life. I have been grossly unsuccessful in marriage. Three marriages all fail. Two of them were easy, easy peasy to get out of. Third one was like a disaster. It cost me a quarter of a billion dollars and two kids and like just like tremendous amounts of angst and time, right? And sadness, right? Like, I, oh, mm. so, so I look at all this and go, well, gosh, I made these mistakes. Nobody's going to think I'm perfect. Okay, now do I have wealth? Hmm. I'm a pretty strong motherfucker, dude. I, I, I look at myself in the mirror and go, dude, I am no one's prostitute. Like, no one's. I will fuck with anybody if they mess with me. Um, and I don't want to. I'm not an angry guy. I'm actually a really peace-loving, cool cat. I, I would rather a bigger community than a smaller community. Um, I think that's wealthy, dude. I, I think being, you know... Rich? What's rich? I don't know what rich is. I mean, I don't have any debt, right? Uh, relative to the size of my family, I don't have any debt. I mean, I do have some debt. I don't think all debt is bad, but my debt doesn't cost me, you know, 10%, 12%. Yeah. Um, so am I wealthy? Um, you know, I have been very, very... Uh, you want You want to know how unhappy you are? in life, be wealthy enough or rich enough, however you define that, to get on a private jet that can fly 18 people all by yourself with a bottle of whiskey and then fly to Germany on a nine-hour flight and see how awesome you are. Mm -hmm. Sitting in a $60 million airplane all by yourself, listening to your own music, uh, you know, drinking half a bottle of whiskey. Eh, like it would have been cool to have some people on that plane, you know. It would have been cool to have yeah. some friends, a lover, somebody that cares about you, writing a book. Well, life, I don't think, I think all that money does, it, 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 it will exasperate and expand your mental and your inferiorities. It does not, you can't hide from this shit. Like, mm -hmm. you get a bunch of money, dude, and you're sitting there like, imagine, you know, you're spending $100,000 to fly to to Europe, right? Didn't have to wait for anybody. You're probably not going to be patted down anywhere. You get on that plane, you're like, wow, this is it, dude? Really? I'm at 51,000 yeah. feet going 600 miles an hour. I'm no closer to God than I was just a minute ago. This is it? Seriously? I can't buy any more music than you can. I can only listen to one song at a time. Uh, I don't have enough friends. You ask Max Kaiser, hey, bro, do you have enough high-quality friends? Hey, I have never heard anyone tell me they have enough high-quality, great friends. Yeah. That, that, to me, this is why I don't understand why people make nasty comments about people that are online trying to do some good. I um, mean, they're brutal, man. You guys were taught your, your behavior is just like, uh, you, need to, you need to go back through your, you need some new parents. Or you needed a teacher that would fucking slap you. <laughs> my, my teachers would hit us, dude. I got paddled when I was a kid. And I deserved mm -hmm. every one of them. Um, so wealth to me is enjoying the moment, having fun, and not being obligated or indebted to anyone, feeling like I'm a slave or a little bitch. 
that that and I hate to use the, I don't really hate to use the term, but some of the language is actually that's where we're at now. Like, hey, are you a little bitch or are you a man? These are mm -hmm. questions. Why would you be offended if I ask you that? But you shouldn't be offended. That answers it's the either question true, dude. Probably. It's either true or it's not, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, it answers the question, I'd say. Probably. All right. Thank you for sharing that. I, yeah. I, I like that. How, how do you define wealth? It's funny because I only later realized how I see money. And I see money as buying time to just figure out life more, kind of like that. And once I realized, you know, I'm kind of at this uh, stage in thinking where I, I love uh, Sailor has this uh, presentation that was live a few weeks ago, right? Like if you say Bitcoin is true finite scarcity and there's only one thing you can compare it to and that is actual time. I love that because that is actually how I always saw money. Money is time. Like I, the, the reward you get for putting in time and energy is represented as money, right? And you use whatever you gather as your reward to create space and time to do other things, right? Yeah, that's kind of how I look at it, yeah. And so does it have to be a lot? I don't, I don't, I don't think so, you know, I, well, probably makes life easier in some way, but also harder in another way because, you know, you want to protect it and all these things and you already did all this work for it. Like, yeah, that's how I think about it. It's just, it's time. Yeah. So, so look, this is a little bit of a pet peeve of mine uh, about this industry because the message I hear, I'm not saying that people say this, but what I hear, okay. And I'm not a horrible listener. What I hear from the pioneers is never sell your Bitcoin. I hope Max doesn't believe this, okay? Never, ever sell your Bitcoin. First off, 46% of you people are going to get a divorce. You will sell your Bitcoin. You will be forced to. But, but you laugh. Hey, everybody laughs because yeah, yeah, no, it's so like painful. It's, yeah. it's so painful, okay? But you will be a seller. And in fact, you don't even control the sell at that point. But that's the first thing. It's mm. very, very important. Anyone that's in Bitcoin that's not protecting its assets and actually buying, acquiring software and professionals, both lawyers and accounting professionals around them, you are making a monster, monster mistake. And I'll use Roger Veer as the latest casualty of a pioneer who had no clue what they were actually building. And I would bet that Max had no clue this would ever be $100,000 today. He, he might have, but, uh, and, and the, the reason I say that is, well, we had 3 million coins just poof, disappear. Why? I don't, I ain't losing any of my coins. <laughs> Not 70 grand, okay? Uh, you didn't value the product correctly. You mispriced it and you didn't treat it as if it was a million dollar asset, which I see very few people doing, including Roger Veer. Had Roger Veer understood this is a $1.3 to $4 trillion industry in the 21st century, 2024, he would never have messed around $50 million worth of taxes. Never. Okay, that's just a massive flaw. Okay, amateur hour. And that's why I say today is the best time to be in Bitcoin because we're done with amateur hour. Now, th this is my pet peeve. Yeah. I, I intend to buy 1,000 Bitcoin. Okay, that is my goal. I encourage everyone to get a goal. I got it. You look at me and go, wow, why would anybody need a thousand Bitcoin? That is a brilliant question, dude. Okay, <laughs> because I'm going to sell 100% of that Bitcoin and I'll reinvest every dollar into education. I can now compete with the federal government, state governments, and every other government on the planet. Like, I want you to get fucking seriously rich, dude. Because mm -hmm. you have more energy than I have. If I can coordinate with you, you get super rich, make 50, 60, 100, 200 million. I make a billion. Max has got 30, 40 billion or however much he's got. Dude, let's collaborate and really kick their heads in. Okay, it's not just about the money. It's about the systems too. Now, yeah. I'm sitting here dealing with U.S. Congresswomen and men asking one question. Grade the United States 
elementary and high school system, please. I haven't gotten any number higher than a D. Oh, really? You're saying it's a D or an F? The federal government spends $80 billion a year on education, which they shouldn't even be spending a dollar. The question then I have to ask them is, hey, if I dedicate all my wealth to a project, let's educate the world, uh, would you give me 4 or 5% of the federal budget? Just allocate 4 or 5%. I'm not asking to do anything other than just give me a little mm. piece of cheese. In four years, if I haven't outperformed every other funding source you have, you can keep all my money. Mm. Okay. Now imagine that, dude. I'll bring five guys that have built. Michael Saylor will be like, I want to meet him with Gary Cardone. Yeah. Boom. Dude, let's. 100%. But this is, I, I, this is, I power. love, love, That's love. That's power, bro. I love that we are ending with this because, yes, this is, this is it. Like, you can do something now and actually change it's gonna be things expensive, that you want to change. You yeah, got to yeah, yeah, spend yeah. some money, okay? You got to have fuel in the jet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't sit there and go, I'm not, I don't have any, I don't want my money to go up. Dude, you better have some fuel in the jet. You're not going to go anywhere. You're competing with animals that can print this shit. Yeah. So it's all about the number go up. Yeah. It is all about the number go up. Okay. It's the only thing that gets their attention to you get these congressmen and senators three months from now, you guys need to move hard into Bitcoin three months from now, every congressman, every senator is going to wake up. They're going to open their fidelity account and they're going to be like, Oh my God, I have $250,000 worth of Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. It's very you true. You can't even and, vote and against this, is, this shit anymore, dude. But this is why, uh, why, why this is so big, right? It's in that sense, it is a war because everything we would want to change in the world, we can actually change it later. But for now, we have to first do the work and get in, right? And be a, be a part of this. Uh, I, I absolutely love that you shared this because yes, like if we want to fix the world, we should acquire the new money and then spend. The new there money. you go, dude. <laughs> yeah, you know. 100%. Let, 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 All right, last question. Let these because mullets because keep you doing the fishing. fiat game. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you have to go fishing with your kids. Last question, and I ask everyone the same question: What is a core belief you will never let go? I have a couple of them, but. Um... The the one core belief that I have lived by all my life. I want to make sure that I'm actually that's an honest statement, but it's never to ruin my name. My my dad told me, my mom told me, hey, look, they can take everything from you. We were white middle class, dude, lower middle class, white trash. Happy just to be Americans. Uh, my grandfather was born on the boat coming over. He probably never had a passport. The lady that works for me for 15 years came across the Mexican border at 14 or 15 years old by herself. Wow. Okay. Her son, he, she's worked for me for 14 years. You know why? She's not the best house cleaner on the whole planet. She's never missed a day and she's never taken a penny from me. I've literally left half a million dollars sitting in here with a vault in a vault and she closes the vault. Okay. Uh, she has a job with me for the rest of her life. Okay, literally, like for the rest of her life. Her child goes to private school, dude. Her child came to my home the other day and met Vivek, a little Mexican born from an illegal immigrant who finally got her paper shit in place. I didn't help her, by the way, get her paper. She didn't ask me. Uh, dude, that's an awesome story. Okay, that's an awesome, mm -hmm. awesome story. So don't ruin my name. Don't do anything that, but, but the real core is that's related to that. Keep your closet clean. If you're like me and you become a business animal, they will, there will be so many people attacking you. It will be unrelentless. Okay. I've had Enron try to destroy my reputation. I've had the U S government through the FTC spend four years of my life and 7 million trying to tell me I was doing something wrong. Credit card fraud. Uh, I, we did not, but I, in order to defend it, $7 million. Mm. I've had the UK government tell me if I did a deal that was totally legal in Norway, when I was helping restructure the energy markets in Europe, 
that I would lose my passport within 24 hours. And I had Bank of America who was holding all the power contracts in the United Kingdom on the nuclear power stations and, 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 and the cadre of banks take me to a 700, 700 pound lunch one day and say, Hey, if you don't knock it off what you're doing, we're going to res- retract, pull off 30% of the electricity in the market. So we screw you. I mean, this is, this is federal collusion. Okay. This is like collusion at a, wow, this shit happens. I thought this was only in books. This is one human being, dude. Okay. These are all true stories of, and those are the bad stories. The good stories are these guys will and can get clocked. Like I've been competing with these people my whole life. They should never have let me in their sandbox. They can't stop it because we're relentless. There's thousands of us. This is the beauty of where we are today. I, we have YouTube and Twitter, okay? Like, whew, I, I can access thousands yes. of people more, okay? I just need yep. a small percentage of people that are like, hey, I like this cat, dude. I think I'm going to join his little little gang and, and uh, like, join a gang. Join a gang that has a common thread that holds water that is more – productive for society than it takes. I don't want to take anything. I've been given a lot, man. It's time Mm -hmm. for me to give back. I'm not taking any of this shit with me. Right. I will. I want to end up even. I don't want to leave my kids with a shitload of money. I want to leave them with a better environment. Yeah. And we can't do this any worse. We've had 150 years trying to do this. It's we are failing. I, I say we vote for a different way. And that different way is going to look really, really, really different. It needs to look different than what it used to look like. It needs to be 28 and 30 year old people going into politics. You should consider going into politics, man. It's your age. I got a 27 year old kid that I just brought on board. He's running this company. He's never had any experience running it. I don't want to run it. You're 27. You run it. I'll show you what you do wrong. And he's either going to make it or he's not going to make it. Right. Yeah. What a, what a great way to learn, man. Hundred percent. That's funny. I've been thinking about it. Um, that's for another conversation, I think. But uh, yeah, for now, man. Thanks so much for sharing your honest thoughts and reflections. I uh, really enjoyed this conversation. I uh, will make sure to link, you know, to your Twitter profile. That's and, all you got to remember, right here. Yeah. For the people not watching, it's freedom is not free. And I think that's a great ending. So thanks so much, man. I appreciate it. Thank your you, Brian. I appreciate it, buddy. Enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, it would be amazing if you could rate, review, and subscribe on the podcast platform of your choice. It will help us educate more millennials on the importance of Bitcoin. You can follow and connect with me on Twitter. I'm Bramke. That's at B-R-A-M-K. And if you are or know someone who has an interesting perspective on Bitcoin that's worth sharing, hit me up. I read and reply to every single message. I appreciate your support and hope you'll be here for the next episode. Thanks for listening.